Take, for instance, one small modern problem, the matter of climate change. Governments have tended to approach the question as we would from inside our paradigm, where we see the future as preferably the same as before, but faster, better, and cheaper. So the climate solutions we are coming up with are A, old-fashioned, and B, draconian, to say the least. Reduction of fossil fuel use, cut back on transportation, higher energy taxation, fewer flights, all stuff that will seriously reduce our commercial and consumerist activity and put paid to any hopes the third world has of becoming like us. But the possibility exists that there might be another way to deal with climate change and indeed the other global problems we face, like the worldwide shortage of drinking water, pollution, starvation, and resource depletion. Back in the 80s, there was an outlier that could have pointed the way, but we did not have big data to identify it. And if I can find it, here it is. A new IBM gizmo back in the 80s called the scanning tunneling microscope, let them do that. Line up 35 xenon atoms to read IBM. Now, the general public even today may still not have heard of this outlier, but what it did was trigger a whole new specialism we now know as nan nanotechnology. I know you know that a nanometer is a billionth of a meter, the width of what, three atoms. Today, there are more than 15,000 labs all over the world working on nanotech. Over 2,000 nanotech products are already on the market. Nanoparticles are now used in cosmetics, bandages, self-cleaning windows, batteries, light bulbs, sports equipment, and wrinkle-free clothing. There are also important nanoprocesses already working in the labs. Tiny delivery systems capable of carrying drug molecules to an individual target cell. One end of a straw you can stick in filthy water and drink pure water out the other end. Spray on transparent perovskite solar cells that turn anything you spray into its own solar power source. Materials like graphene, a hundred times stronger than steel and light as a feather. Sensors you spray onto a field so they can alert you only when the crop needs water or pesticides. Molecular filters that can take all the pollutant molecules out of exhausts and smokestacks. Systems for trapping and rendering harmless all greenhouse gases. Now, if these and many more similar techniques are going to be on the market in the next 20 years, there may be no need for the old technology economy-busting cleanup measures we are now planning. There's little doubt that nanotechnology could eventually allow us to consumerize all 8 billion people on Earth and not destroy the environment in doing so, except for something else nanotechnology promises to do, which could mean, as I began by saying, that the future is no longer what it used to be. That is to say, the same, only better. I said that back in 1981, IBM invented the scanning tunneling microscope and enabled us to move atoms around. Thing is, if you can pick up an atom and put it with other atoms, you will encourage the atoms to self-organize and clump together into a molecule. For instance, you put two atoms of hydrogen together with one atom of oxygen, you get H2O, a molecule of water. Here's one you might enjoy. No, you might not. Hang on, yeah, there it is. You put these atoms together like that, and you could make a cuppa, because that is sweet tea. And this is where the future stops being what it used to be, because that ability to move atoms and molecules will change absolutely everything, everywhere, for everybody. The device that would manipulate atoms and molecules is referred to by researchers now as a nanofactory, sitting on your desk or in your back garden shed, and the nanofactory will make anything. To give a sense of the scale involved in building and operating a nanofactory, there are 50 trillion atoms in a grain of salt. So putting together a nanofactory would require us to be able to build trillions of atomic-scale robots to work on atomic-scale production lines, taking atoms and putting them together to make molecules, and then doing the same to put the molecules together to make materials, and then shaping the materials into stuff like food, clothing, construction materials, electronics, a gold bar, or a perfect Mona Lisa copy. And all fabricated almost instantaneously, since down at the nano level, things happen a million times faster than up at the human level. The feedstock for the nanofactory would be principally dirt, air, and water, and the energy, of course, would be spray-on solar. Now, this may all be sounding a bit like science fiction, so let me add, 
that the first atomic scale nanofactory production line robot was produced at Manchester University five months ago. So the nanofactory is coming. 